What's going on guys? My name is Ted, and um, today I'm bringing you guys some Black Ops Zombies gameplay. This is going to be the map Dur Eyes. It's actually a Call of Duty 5 classic map. And um, this is my, my personal favorite map on Call of Duty um, for Nazi Zombies, and I'm so glad they brought it back to Black Ops. I just wish they brought back the PPSH, but that's another rant for another time. Um, this is going to be my 10 Minutes with Ted episode for, um, I think this is episode 3 now for this series. I started this um, once I got back from my mission trip to Sakahatchee, and um, this is the third week, so I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. And uh, Zombies gameplay is good for the background, because I feel like um, Zombies is a very long game, and it, it's hard to take just certain sections of it and make like a montage out of it. This is, I'm going to use it as a lot of background noise, and I um, hope you guys enjoy watching that. I went really try hard against these zombies, I'm not going to lie, and um, you're going to see that throughout the gameplay. I ended up like drop shotting zombies. I felt really stupid when I was watching back. I'm like, why did I do that? Um, but I was enjoying myself, and these guys were just randoms. Um, I think one guy, Heckley, was from my friends list. He was from my friends list, but the other two were like some random kids, and then one of them ends up leaving halfway through. Um, it, it was really bad, but I had a good time, and I hope you guys enjoy watching that gameplay. So recently, last week, um, I was telling you guys over a, over a, a vlog that I was contemplating quitting my job and that I was going to have to the next day. And um, it turns out that actually later on that night, I ended up quitting my job. Um, my manager, I'm sorry, not my manager, my employer, ended up calling me over the phone. And um, he's one of my good friends from church. So that's actually how I got the job. And to talk with him, I, I told him the situation. And um, I'll try to break it down as best as I can for you guys. Um, the main thing to note is that I wasn't having any distress of the job. I absolutely loved the job. I loved all the people at the job. Um, I guess the main problem was that um, there's a there's managers out there and there's co-managers and the co-manager's name is Scott and um, it seemed like he had for for winter he had brought he had uh, worked at a place called the Daily Dose and this restaurant um, the manager there was a woman and she had a son named Graylin and um, because of him working there all winter long and because he, they gave him a lot of free food um, when he worked there or when he when he came there over the summer um, he tried to get this lady's son Graylin a job out the beach. And um, he ended up getting his, the son a job, and um, so Graham started working out on our side of the beach. The only problem with this was that there really wasn't enough work for, for him and me and, and everyone else on the beach. And um, because of that, he ended up getting a lot of my work because Eric, the manager, wanted to keep me helping him in the vehicle. Um, and the main reason for that was because when you work in the vehicle, you only get half days. And Eric knew that Graylin wouldn't drive in from, from James Island, which is about a 30-minute drive. He wouldn't drive in uh, to Kiowa every single day just to work a half day. And I lived on the island, so I didn't have to do that. Well, that's fine and dandy. And I, I understood that portion of it. The only thing that made that didn't make sense to me was that I, I've been there for three years and I wasn't getting any full days. And full days is where the real money comes from. It's where the real tips come from. And if you don't get full days, you're really not getting anywhere on the beach. And um, I told them that several times. I, I let them know. And unfortunately, they never evolved. So um, because of that, I had to quit the job. And I was really worried for like one or two days I wouldn't find a job. But it turns out that literally three days afterwards, um, my dad ended up having a board meeting. My dad's a, a very um, important person as far as Keel Island goes because we have a lot of properties out there. And um, they had a board meeting for one of the, uh, the the buildings there. And they ended up needing a parking lot attendant. So my dad put my name in the hat. Actually, the board member suggested it. And my, my dad just said, hey, you know, he'd be glad to do it. And um, kind of volunteered me for the job. And, and I, I started doing that. And um, being the parking lot attendant is not, quite, not nearly as fun as the beach. But the pay is a heck of a lot better. It's also working with very flexible people. Um, the board members are all very nice people. My dad knows them very well. And because of that, I know them very well. And um, they're all very nice people, and the pay is absolutely incredible. Um, it's about $15 an hour, and I get as many hours a week as I want to work it. They literally tell me, you know, pick as many hours as you want, and you work it. And, um, and that's wonderful. And um, upcoming is uh, the PGA Golf Tour. It's actually one of the professional golf tours here in America. And um, it's a very, very famous golf tour. And they're having it on Kiwa Island this year. It's going to be one of the biggest, um, it's going to be, well, the biggest time for Kiwa for the entire summer. And I'm working 89 hours that week. I'm going to make well over $1,000 just from working one week at, a, at um, being a parking lot attendant, which is just uh, nothing harder than taking people's names and checking them into the villas. Um, very, very easy job, but very, very good money. And um, that's kind of what I've wanted all along. I'm going to take this money, I'm going to go off to college with a big smile on my face, um, have a lot of parties, have a lot of pizza, and um, definitely enjoy myself at college. And that's kind of the main reason I, I couldn't stay at the beach, is I wasn't getting here with that job, and I, I really didn't need money for college. It was kind of a moral obligation to myself to make sure that I get enough money for college. By the way, this is like a super clutch moment. Just now, like, <laughs> I ran through like a million zombies, and just like everyone's dying around me. The teammates I had, no offense to them if they're listening, because I know Heckley's subscribed to me on YouTube, but the other guy's just a random, but he was 
awful. They were both awful players. Um, this guy was very, very good. You'll see him over here just running his own little circle. This is where I get really clutch over here in a second, so we're going to relate to the gameplay for a little bit. Um, I start running semi-circles with him, and then I kind of get him off track, and I, I felt bad, so I just ran off to my own little corner, and um, I took a horde of his zombies with me. Um, but this guy was really good. He ended up just getting so frustrated because everyone else was so bad except for me. He sent me a friend's request and left the game. So <laughs> that was pretty funny, I thought. Um, if you saw my video yesterday, actually, Ted, the, the zombie slayer, um, professional zombie slayer Ted, this is actually from the clip of, of that part. And um, I thought that was a really good clip right there. Um, just zombies are swarming me. And I jacked up the sensitivity to 8 for the majority of this video, and I go up to 10 later on in this video just because I, I was feeling really like like epic mode. Like for some reason, you just can't, it doesn't seem like you can play very well when you're on a 4 sensitivity. Whereas with I'm on like an 8 or a 10 sensitivity, and given all the auto aim that you have in zombies, um, I can I can hold a 10 sensitivity very easily, and I can like turn on the zombies really quick, and it just, it just feels a lot of fun. One thing too, I was going back to Black Ops, I'm sorry, to Call of Duty 5 zombies today for a little bit, I've really been getting into zombies recently, and um, when I went back to COD 5 zombies today, I noticed how quiet the zombies were. Um, in this game, the zombies like screech and yell and just go insane. Um, in Call of Duty 5, they were pretty silent, and I actually had a few times where I just, I literally got scared and like jumped out of my seat. Because um, zombies would like sneak up behind me, it wouldn't make any noise, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing there? And uh, it definitely scared me, but it was a lot of fun. Call of Duty 5 zombies compared to Black Ops zombies is like two completely different things. Um, even this map in general, like besides the particle effects and the, the better graphics, um, the, the way the zombies acted there, I jack up sensitivity to 10, I'm like, whoo, go in circles and fly around. Um, but in Black Ops zombies, the zombies don't, when they hit you, they don't actually do as much damage and they also don't tilt your screen nearly as much. Um, crawlers in this game are a three hit kill, so they'll give you a little bit more health that way. Um, Juggernaut gives you an, an extra boost more than it did back in, um, in Call of Duty 5 zombies. Also, they've added in new perks and things to kind of make the experience easier and they give solo people three lives. Um, it's kind of funny how, how the, the, they make games and they, they keep making them easier. I, I don't really understand that. Um, it's the same way for, for most games in the world. Look here. I, I couldn't control this instead of it all. I don't know why I was trying to play on 10. I mean, <laughs> look. I'm just like spinning in circles. And um, <laughs> if there wasn't a lot of auto-aim, I would have done horrible here. But thankfully, there's a lot of auto-aim and the dogs are just stupid. But it's kind of funny going back to Call of Duty 5 Zombies because that's where I, I began on, um, on, on Call of Duty. And that's where I began on console gaming is, is with Call of Duty 5 Zombies. And um, as far as this map goes, Der Eyes, this map me the Der Eyes means zombie factory, and um, I think it's in Dutch, or maybe it's in German, I don't know. Um, but either way, it means zombie factory. And I remember back when, um, in August 6, 2010, 2009 maybe, I think it was 2010, when, um, no, I'm sorry, it was 2009, August 6, 2009, when this when this map got released to console um, versions, uh, well, actually, just that was just the Xbox release date, um, I stood up all night, no, all along that night for this, there was a third map pack for Call of Duty 5, the Durais map pack, and um, I absolutely love this map. I remember playing this endlessly all night long. I'm like, whoa, teleporters, whoa, upgrades. This is so cool. And um, it still is really cool, but you know, you kind of get used to it. It's kind of the standard now is to have the the teleporters and the upgrades. Um, back when I, when this map got released, it was groundbreaking on so many levels, and um, and it was a blast. I, I played this like I said all night long that night. I skipped school the next day for this for this map. Um, this is my first map pack to be released um, after I saw, after I started playing Xbox, and I was stoked for it. I started playing right after Shino Numa got released, and this is the first one that I could actually be awake for the release of. And um, it was kind of funny. I remember if anyone else was back there at the same time. Um, on August 6, 2009, they had um, a lot of technical difficulties getting this map pack released, and it was supposed to be released. Uh, I was following them, I guess, on Twitter, or somehow I had some... Maybe it was like Facebook. I don't know what I was doing, but I was, I was somehow getting info from them, and... Um, this is actually way before my, I got on Twitter, so I don't know where I was getting the info from. But either way, I, I remember them saying that they were going to have it released at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Anyways, long story short, it didn't get released till fucking 5 a.m., so I was staying up all night long for this game that I could have just gone to sleep for and gotten up in the morning and early and, and, and downloaded. And it took forever to download when I first got it to because everyone, the whole world was just downloading it. There, that guy like lagged out and left, I guess, and something happened to him. But anyway, so I was playing this all night long that night, and um, I, I missed that e excitement. Um, I haven't been excited for a map pack release or anything really um, ever since that moment. That was like when I started really getting excited, and um, I kind of got that excited when I was playing when I when I got Modern Warfare 3 the release night, and I was just I was so excited that night to play Modern Warfare 3. The only problem that night was I ended up getting a speeding ticket because um, I, I was so excited to play Modern Warfare 3. In fact, that I ended up going 55 and a 30 on the way home that night, and at 3 a.m. I got pulled over, and uh, me and my three friends, the cop thought we were like drinking and all. I'm like, nope, we're just nerds. We went for release night at, at, at GameStop, and he understood that. 
But um, that was the most excited I've been, and I'm still very excited for Black Ops 2, but I haven't even been watching the release trailers. I haven't been really keeping up with it. I think my excitement lessens every time a new Call of Duty comes out, and um, it's just the, the game's kind of getting me burnt out, I guess. And especially um, Modern for 3, I, I can't really even play it anymore. I'm just, I'm very bored of it. Um, here's, I, I didn't want to show the entire game. I ended up just skipping forward to the end. We ended up just camping on the catwalk until the very end here. What, this that We had like a 12-year-old, and he was just obsessed with throwing monkey, monkey grenades the entire time. There I was trying to halo jump the world and ended up going down, and I knew the game was over at this point because some guy just tried to throw. Like, he doesn't see the, the millions of zombies behind him. I don't know. Oh, actually, he, he got me up there. Yeah, then there's millions of zombies behind him. I go down again. He's just sitting there with his little pistol. This kid, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. He was trying to throw monkey grenades the entire time. And um, if you look at the scoreboards at the end, I had, like, triple everyone else's score. It was just ridiculous. They did nothing. I did everything, <laughs> as is life. And um, that's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay commentary. Let me just think about life down below. I want to hear everyone's thoughts on whatever I talked about in this commentary. Um, let me know what your first Call of Duty was, how you, if you enjoy it still, or if you're still kind of burnt out on the series. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.